Hi everyone and thank you for joining us for the Internet Personalization webinar. My name is Siv Rose and I'm the Digital Marketing Coordinator here at Elcom. So as Product Director at Elcom, Tim is driven by the convergence of technology innovation with the strategic objectives of industry, combining the fast changing trends in the marketplace with the challenges of a high caliber client base forms the basis of the Elcom CMS roadmap. So Tim is responsible for the direction, development and growth of the Elcom CMS platform, which drives the intranets and websites of key brands around the world. So over to you, Tim. Thanks a lot, Siv. So today we're going to explore how content personalization can be applied and have great success within intranet environments. Often content personalization is thought of as a public facing website strategy. However, the same techniques can be applied to different points within an intranet quite successfully. Intranets are channels for a huge amount of information, files, media, notes, comments, news, status updates, and a whole lot more information. And this information then needs to be constantly made available to different users throughout your internet who have different needs. They play different roles and have different priorities and they are all trying to get on with their day-to-day -day activities and the internet plays a central role in that job. The end result is that intranets often become cluttered with information and the pages within them try and display as much content and as much information as possible. This situation poses an ongoing, ongoing challenge for intranets which is how do you cut through the clutter in order to assist individual users to get access to the information that they need to get their jobs done more efficiently. This is where content personalization can come into play. The approach is to refine your home pages and other important points to filter out the general clutter and surface the information which is relevant to your individual employees as you understand their profile and their behaviors within your intranet. Your objectives may vary based on your intranet goals. However, the primary objective for using content personalization within an intranet is to speed up the time it takes to find relevant information and therefore complete tasks. In order to start content personalization within your intranet, it's important to consider three key ingredients. A fundamental component in applying content personalization strategies to your intranet is in understanding your information. Without structured, well-organized information, it becomes very difficult to know what to surface and to who. And this starts with ensuring that content is organized and secured within a strong folder structure, and then ensuring that content is created and constantly being tagged, obviously backed by a comprehensive taxonomy. The aim here is to make your information as identifiable as possible for when it needs to be referenced. The next is a clear understanding of your users. It's important to be able to group your users across a range of facets, such as group membership, user preferences, and marketing segments. And this can obviously then play out through permissions, interests, expertise, and a whole bunch of other ranges. The more layers that you can apply to your users, the more equipped you'll be to match up relevant information to your users. The last key ingredient is your pages and how they display their information. It is through content regions within your pages that information is displayed to your users. Preparing this ingredient is about understanding your user journeys through your intranet, where people are going to find their information, how they are expecting to find it, and what they do with it once they've found it. Identify key points that are causing either cuts of clutter, confusion or bottlenecks, as well as understanding the flows that are used by your users to complete their tasks and their processes as they interact with your screens. There are different layers of content personalization that are applicable within an internet environment. Let's go through a few of them now. The first is to use marketing style segmentation to drive personalized content to different users. This approach to personalization is focused on putting your users into different buckets or segments as you understand their interests and their behaviors throughout their use of the intranet. You can then display different content blocks to users who match one or more of those segments. And within an intranet, good candidates for segmentations might be things like office location, topics, 
projects and departments. Segmentation of your users should evolve. That is, it should be updated as your understanding of your users change. And this can be driven by interactions that your users have with your intranet. Another layer of content personalization which is applicable within an intranet environment is that provided by your security groups. Security groups drive permissions within intranets around what a user has access to and what permissions they have to see content. This means that web pages, content lists can be filtered and content blocks can be shown or hidden based on whether a user has access to the underlying content. Usually security groups don't change that much and management of them is mostly driven by IT. Lastly, user preferences can be used as a layer to apply personalised content within intranets. User preferences are very powerful because they are options that your intranet users can individually manage themselves and therefore they can change them as needed. In terms of driving personalised content, user preferences can be factored in when filtering lists of content to personalise them to match your users' preferences of the type of content, the interest that they have, that they want to see. So once these components to personalization are in place across your intranet, it enables us to look at how some of these great points can be used uh, to deliver content personalization. The first good place is your home page. Intranet home pages often become very cluttered as they end up trying to display as much information to as many people as possible. So here are a few tips where you can get started. If you have a news feed on your home page, it can be a great place to start personalising by filtering it by department. If you're displaying any resource lists on your home page, files, documents, images, media, it can also be personalised potentially by office location where it's relevant. Home pages are a great place for promotional banners and they should be personalised by interest and location. If you have a news section within your, within your intranet, then it's a great place to apply content personalization as well. Your news feed could be personalized by matching news stories to the user's preferences, interests, or office location. And a news section is also a great place for promotional banners. Um, and these can be personalized based on matching a user's segments. Any pages throughout your intranet that surface resources, such as files and documents, are great places to personalise further as well as they are often become part of a user's flow to getting their work done and anything to help them find the right resource fast enables your workforce to be more efficient. So you can look to make content suggestions based on your user's security groups and interests, uh, suggesting the content that you think that they would need to get the job done. Filter and localise any media lists as people are mostly only interested in what's happening in their own office or department. So let's run a quick poll. Where do you think content personalization would be most effective? Um, the options here are news and announcements, within promotional banners, or to filter content lists. I'll just take a bit of time now. If you'd just like to put your uh, vote into the panel uh, on your screen there, um, we'll just Give it a bit of time just to allow people to get their votes in. Just a few more moments. So the poll there is, where do you think personalization would be most effective? News and announcements listings, promotional banners, or where you're listing resources? Okay, we might just close down that poll. So as you can see there, very interesting results. Um, pretty much, well exactly equal of 43% is news and announcements and resource lists uh, with promotional banners uh, coming in at 14% there. So you can see a strong reflection there that information um, that you feel is quite applicable to personalization around uh, the kind of content people would like to see is the information that they need to get their job done, resource lists, and also um, updates and information that you might find in news and announcements uh, that you, you think people would find relevant to be personalized as well. Okay, fantastic. Well, we might move on and um, 
start exploring where Elcom CMS can play a role here in internet content personalization. So Elcom CMS provides the tools to implement everything that we've covered so far. So with Elcom CMS, you can implement as little or as much as you'd like, uh, and it's very flexible. It will grow with your content personalization strategy. So firstly, it provides its own segmentation provider within the content personalization module to enable you to start segmenting your users as they interact with your intranet. Uh, you can do that using web API calls, um, where you can then wire up key interaction points throughout your intranet pages to start segmenting them as they uh, interact, click through, select drop downs and other key um, interactions. This segmentation can then be fed into marketing rule sets, which enable you to start grouping your users together based on that implicit data in segments such as interests or location. Another layer of personalization that's easy to get started with within an intranet is to use your security groups. This, these groups of users are usually based on their access and permissions, and usually information is already being managed by your Active Directory or whatever your identity provider may be. Lastly, Elcom CMS supports user preferences as part of the membership module, which enables users to build up their own profile of preferences. Good candidates for preferences could be locations, topics, and area of expertise. Once you're building up a good understanding of your intranet users through those personalization layers, you can then use Elcom CMS to start personalizing content. The first way is to per personalize content editor elements and embedded articles. These can be shown or hidden based on security permissions driven by security groups, as well as matching users to segmentation rule sets. Dynamic widgets are also a very powerful tool to use in serving personalized content, as they can filter their lists of items that they display uh, to match up to a user's security groups or their user preferences, and can completely be shown or hidden based on matching user segmentation rules. Let's walk through how to put a couple of these ideas into action. So you can see on the screen, here is a uh, generic intranet homepage. So first up, we've highlighted a promotional banner, and this is for an upcoming corporate event. It's been created using a content editor element, and it's been configured to only be displayed to a target audience, and that target audience is driven by marketing segments. Below that is the latest news and events list. It's been created using a dynamic widget element. It's also been configured to only display items that are relevant to the user based on their user preferences. So let's see how you'd go about creating these personalized blocks of content. In order to get personalized work, personalization working using a marketing segment approach, you first need to define your segmentation structure. Segmentations in Elcom CMS are defined within the taxonomy tree within their own subtree titled marketing segmentations. And good segmentations are ones which can be applied to the majority of your organizational structure, such as locations or departments. Another way to use segmentations is to create ones which can be used to tag a user when they perform specific actions, for instance, like downloading a file or filling in a form. Next, under marketing automation, you can create a new rule set then start building up a collection of segments which a user will need to match in order to be applied to that rule set. You can also set weighting for rule sets in order to determine which rule will be applied if a user matches more than one rule set. Then users need to be assigned to segments. The easiest way to do this is to update their profile through the admin interface, selecting applicable segments you want to apply to that user. Alternatively, though, you could use the web API to wire up calls, which would automatically segment a user as they interact with your intranet, such as visiting a particular page, selecting a specific value from a dropdown, or downloading something. Lastly, you then match up different content blocks on your page to segment rule sets. And you go about doing this um, by going into the properties of either a content editor or a dynamic widget element and selecting the marketing rule set that you'd like, so that only people matching its rule set will dis be displayed that element. You can then layer as many of these personalized content blocks on a single page in order to deliver a true personalized experience which will adapt to your users as they continue to interact with your intranet. Now let's look at how to personalize lists of content using a user's preferences. 
First, you'll need to provide a list of preference options for users to be able to select from. And this is managed through taxonomy as well, where you nominate specific taxons to be made available as user preferences. Good examples of user preferences are interests, expertise, and topical categorizations. Now, when users go into My Account and navigate the preferences, they will be able to start selecting their own preferences. The good thing about user preferences is that users can come here and manage their own and update them at any time. Now, add a dynamic widget to your page and edit its properties. And under Taxonomy, you'll find a section where you can select the top level user preferences that you'd like the dynamic widget to filter its items by. This means that you'll only show items that have been tagged with taxons that match the user's preferences. This is, is, is an especially powerful way to create highly personalized lists of content. I hope you found this information that we've provided interesting and useful. And before we get into our Q&A, uh, and we can start getting your questions now, I did want to take a quick uh, time to go over an overview of LCOM and LCOM CMS. LCOM is a globally recognized web CMS. With over one million end users and a global team, we work with mid to enterprise organizations to achieve their corporate objectives by delivering powerfully simple web solutions and customer experiences. LCOM CMS powers intranets, websites, portals, mobile, social and e-learning sites. And with over 90 base features out of the box, LCOM CMS makes it easy for you to quickly and cost efficiently deploy solutions to support your collaboration across your organization. Even if you're at the early stages of considering CMS options, looking at intranets, um, or trying to figure out how content personalization in your intranet can apply to yours, we're happy to come and meet you and help scope out the needs and develop a functional plan and budget around the things that we've talked about today. This is obligation free, of course. So now I might head back to Siv for the Q&A. Thanks, Tim. So before we go into the Q&A, I just want to quickly let everyone know we will be sending a follow-up email with links to today's webinar and other related resources. We also have a fantastic resource section on our website with valuable knowledge-based content. So now on to the Q&A. Um, Tim, our first question is, what licenses do you need to use the features you mentioned? Uh, yeah. So it Depends on what you want to utilize um, in your uh, content personalization strategy, but security groups, uh, content editors, and dynamic widget elements are all part of the core uh, Elcom CMS license, uh, so you, you get that out of the box. Uh, the content personalization and membership modules um, are both licensable uh, for 3K each. Um, the content personalization module will enable you uh, to do that segmentation-driven personalization whereas the membership module will provide your users with the ability to um, manage their own uh, user preferences. Okay, great. So second question, can you add in personalization to an existing internet and how would you get started? Um, yeah, you definitely can. Um, so the best place to probably start is to take a look at your, um, your taxonomy structures uh, and your content. So start looking at how to define a strong taxonomy. Um, Think about how you could match such things as user preferences and good segmentations into that structure. Uh, and then re review your content. Um, so make sure that as much of your content is tagged with applicable taxonomy um, and also that it's properly secured. So the more uh, content that you can start categorizing um, through taxonomy and security, uh, the better you will be to serve it and personalize it. So once you've got that in place, uh, then you can start to look at which points throughout your intranet uh, you might like to start to personalize, the banners, the lists, um, and, and all those other kind of points um, throughout your intranet. Okay, great. And final question, um, any tips on how to measure if personalization is working? Yeah, um, so being able to see if um, personalization uh, works is critical because uh, you'll be spending a bit of time you know, trying to get it to work and you'll want to know how to make improvements um, to that process. Uh, so I'd probably start with um, identifying each point that you intend to personalize, that news list, that banner, um, and ask uh, you know, why are you doing it and what results do you intend to see. Um, you know, is it uh, you're looking at reducing the time it takes to complete a task? Um, 
Is it uh, less need for users to drill deep into your intranet to find specific content? Are you trying to encourage more engagement through social interactions? Uh, so whatever it is that you're looking at achieving, you can then um, start to look at what you know tools, some you know the reports or analytics uh, tools that you have um, to start measuring those metrics. You know, so it might be things like um, you know number of clicks to reach a particular goal. Uh, it could be you know uh, the uh, duration spent on particular pages, and then measure to see whether you know those number of clicks gets reduced, the time on pages shortens. Uh, so on and so forth. So it's definitely about asking uh, why you're personalising things, um, and you know what the outcome you intend to see is, and then it will help make uh, measuring that a lot easier. Um, okay, everyone. So that's all we have time for. Thank you, Tim, and thank you everyone for joining us. We look forward to keeping in touch.